In lesson 4.1, students see demonstrations and do experiments with ice melting, sugar dissolving, and two reactants reacting to form a precipitate to see whether the mass of substances change as they go through either physical or chemical changes. Students will see that whether it's melting, dissolving, or a chemical change, the mass of the products will always equal the mass of the reactants. Let's take a look. First, you'll do a demonstration where you'll put ice in water and show students the total mass of the ice, water, and the cup. Here, it's 127.9 grams. Then, you can either leave the cup on the scale or take it off, let the ice melt, and then recheck the mass. And here you can see that it's still 127.9 grams. The melting of the ice doesn't change the fact that all the molecules are still there. They're just in a liquid state now instead of a solid state. Students will do another experiment that involves dissolving. They'll take water in a cup and place it on a scale and then add sugar to the water. Now right now, the cup plus the water and the sugar undissolved weighs 87 grams. Then students will swirl the cup to dissolve the sugar, it takes a couple of minutes, and then recheck the mass, and it's exactly what it was before, 87 grams. So even though the sugar dissolves, the sugar molecules come apart from one another and mix in with the water, no sugar molecules were gained, none were lost, all the ones that were there before are still there, all the water molecules are still there, except for probably a few that evaporated, but our scale isn't sensitive enough to tell, so the mass stays the same. And finally, you can do a demonstration of a chemical change to test whether the mass of the reactants is the same as the mass of the products. So here, on the left, we have sodium carbonate dissolved in water, and on the right, there's magnesium sulfate dissolved in water. The sodium carbonate is 61.8 grams to start, including the cup, and the magnesium sulfate is 61.2 grams, including the cup. So you can put one of them on the scale, and you'll see in this case it's 61.2 grams, and now add the sodium carbonate to the magnesium sulfate, and here it'll form a precipitate, And now you have both reactants, and you have to also add both cups, because we took into account the weight of the cups before. And 61.8 grams plus 61.2 grams should be 123 grams, which it is. So even though there was a chemical change, no molecules of sodium carbonate or magnesium sulfate were gained or lost. They just recombined to form the precipitate. So the mass stays the same. So here we have an animation to help kids understand on the molecular level why it is that the mass of the reactants always equals the mass of the products. So here we see that the cup plus the water plus the ice cube weighs 120 grams. And you can show kids that the ice cube is made of water molecules arranged in a crystal structure. So when the ice melts, it's just the water molecules changing from a crystal to a looser structure as a liquid. They just went from a, a solid to a liquid, so it should have the exact same mass. And it does. The melted ice on the right, plus the water, plus the cup, is exactly the same as it was before. So in the sugar experiment, in this case we have a cup plus water plus sugar weighs 85 grams, and it's swirled so that it dissolves. You can show kids the model of a sugar crystal in the middle with the purple hexagons, and they're held together by positive and negative charges and the water is around them. When the sugar dissolves, there's still the same number of sugar molecules that there were before and still the same number of water molecules, so the mass should stay the same. The water plus the cup plus the dissolved sugar has the same mass as it did before. And the same is true with the sodium carbonate and the magnesium sulfate. If you make two solutions, they each weigh 80 grams in this case. Let's take a look inside. What you see is magnesium sulfate has a magnesium ion and a sulfate ion, and a sodium carbonate has a sodium ion and a carbonate ion, 
we just use simple shapes for these and when they're in solution they come apart so now when you mix them together they recombine and instead of having sodium carbonate and magnesium sulfate you end up with a precipitate magnesium carbonate but if you count it up the number of ions it's still all the same there are no new ions or molecules were added or taken away the same ones are there before they're just connected to each other differently so the mass stays the same for the NGSS standard 5 PS12 Measure and graph quantities to provide evidence that regardless of the type of change that occurs when heating, cooling, or mixing substances, the total weight of matter is conserved. We don't graph any quantities here, but we measure the mass of the substances before the change and after and show that they're the same. Students see that whether it's a change in state like melting or whether it's dissolving or a chemical change, no matter what type of change, the mass of the products equals the mass of the reactants. If you look at the foundation boxes, science and engineering practices, planning and carrying out investigations, students see a couple of demonstrations and do an investigation where they measure the mass of the reactants and the mass of the products and see that they're the same. For disciplinary core ideas, structure and properties of matter and chemical reactions, students see that the mass of matter is conserved no matter what change it goes through. And they also see that when they add magnesium sulfate and sodium carbonate, that a new substance, magnesium carbonate, is formed. For cross-cutting concepts, cause and effect, students see that if you look down at the molecular level, the reason why the mass of the reactants and the mass of the products are the same is because whether you're melting, dissolving, or causing a chemical change, no atoms, molecules, or ions are gained or lost. They're just rearranged. Well, thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.